this lesson, we're gonna calculate the moment of inertia about the centroidal x-axis and the centroidal y-axis of this particular figure. And so since I already discussed the concept of moment of inertias and centroids in our previous video, then we'll just fast track our solutions right here. And so first, let's try to solve the centroidal x-axis by considering the distances along y. Because for the centroidal x-axis, we need y bar, while for the centroidal y-axis, we need bar x. And so let's label the triangle as our area 1 and then the semicircle will be our area 2 while this hollow portion this will be our area 3. Now if you have a hollow portion then you need to subtract that area because this is essentially a hole. And so for A1 we have the area of the triangle this will be 1 half times the base which is 150 multiplied by the height which is 200 mm. And so this is 15,000. And then for area 2, we have a semicircle in which the area is pi r squared divided by 2. Now the radius of this semicircle is 75 mm, this distance. This is half of 150. So pi times 75 squared divided by 2, this gives us 5625 over 2 multiplied by pi. Now I will just use the fraction so that we will be able to use the exact value. Now for A3, we have the area of the circle which is the hollow portion, this becomes, uh, we are given the diameter, so let's use pi d squared divided by 4. So we have pi times the diameter, which is 30 squared divided by 4. And so this gives us 225 pi. Now for us to streamline the process, we can actually store this into a variable, let's say a, and then we can store this into a variable, let's say c, I mean b, and then we can store this into c. And so let's just do this. So area 1 is 15,000, so let's put this into A. And then the second area will be stored into B, this one. And then 225 pi will be stored into C. So we have the following values. And so first, since we are interested in the centroidal x-axis, let's solve for the distances along y. However, we will need to first choose our reference axis or axes uh, because we are considering about x and about y. And so let's just use this one. This is our origin. So this is our y-axis and this is our x-axis. And so this will be our reference axis. Now our total area will be area 1, which is A, plus area 2, minus the third area, which is the hollow portion. And so we have A plus B minus C. Let's store this into D. And so our total area is already at D. So this is 23128.87. And so let's now try to solve bard y. So we have 80 times bard y. This is equal to a1 y1 plus a2 y2 and then minus a3 y3. Again, this is minus because this is a whole. And so let's try to figure out y1, y2, and y3. And so let's try to solve y1. Now y1 is going to be the distance from our reference axis up to the centroid of the triangle. Now let's say the centroid of the triangle is somewhere right here. This is just our approximation. And so this distance from this point up to the reference axis, this will be our y1. Now this is 2 thirds of 200 mm because from this point up to here, we are going to the narrowing portion of the triangle. And so this is now 400 divided by 3. Now for the circular section, our distance from the reference axis will be this distance. Let's extend this one. Now this distance is... 200 mm minus 40 mm, which is 160. So this is y2, so this is 160 mm. Now finally, for the semicircle, the centroid of this figure is right here. Uh, by the way, this is a3, so this must correspond to y3. So we'll change this one, this is y3. And then the distance from this point up to the reference axis, this is our y2. Now let's just move this, and then let's extend this one. And so this distance, is gonna be our y2. Now recall that our formula for semicircles, the distance from this point up to the center of the circle, this will be 4r over 3 pi. So 4r over 3 pi, which is 4 times 75, which is the radius, divided by 3 pi. And so this total distance will be 200 mm plus this distance. So 200 plus 4 times 75 divided by 3 pi. And so we now have y1, y2, and y3. And so we're now going to pair that right here. And so here we have, since this is stored into d, we have d multiplied by bar y. And then this is stored into a. So a multiplied by y1, which is 400 over 3, plus b, which is a2, 
multiplied by y2 which is this distance so 200 plus 4 times 75 over 3 pi and then we have minus a3 which is stored into c multiplied by y3 which was 160 and so we can now solve bar y so this becomes d times bar y which is our unknown variable equals a times 400 over 3 plus b times 200 plus 4 times 75 over 3 pi and then minus c multiplied by 160 so press shift solve we have 170.147 so y bar equals 170.147 and then this is mm now we can actually store this value into e so that we'll be able to streamline the process so shift store and then e this is now our y bar and so notice that for this calculator we can only store values up to f now the advantage of Canon calculators, let me just open my emulator, the advantage of Canon calculators is you can actually store values into numbers. So if you have 58, press equals and then shift store 1, you can now store this value into the number. So you have A, B, C, D, E, and F as well as uh, 0 up to 9. And so this is the advantage of this calculator. And so now, since we already have Y bar, we can now solve IXN. Now our centroidal x-axis is somewhere right here, above 160. And so this is gonna be our neutral axis, and then this is barred y. And so since the centroids of the figures do not coincide with the centroidal x-axis, then we need to apply the transfer formula. And so solving ixn, we have the summation of io plus ad squared for each of the shapes. And so let's first start with the triangle. Our io will be bh cubed over 36, so we have a base of 150, so 150 times 200 cubed, which is our height, over 36, plus the area of the triangle, which is stored into A. So this is plus A multiplied by D squared, in which D is Y and minus Y bar. So this is 400 over 3, so 400 over 3 minus Y bar, which is stored into E. So again, uh, this is D, which is Y and minus Y bar. And then we're going to square this one. And so this is for the triangle. Now we're going to look at the semicircle because that's our second shape. So this is plus, and then the moment of inertia of the semicircle is about the x-axis, we have this formula, 0.11 r to the 4th. So 0 0.11 multiplied by r, which is 75 to the power of 4. And then plus the transfer formula, which is b, the area of the semicircle, multiplied by d squared. Now for the semicircle, we have this value of yn. So 200 plus 4 times 75 divided by 3 pi minus y bar, which is stored into e. And so we will square this one. This is for the semicircle. Now finally, for for the circular shape, since this is a hollow portion, then you also need to subtract this one. So minus the moment of inertia of a circular section about x is pi d to the fourth divided by 64. So we have pi times the diameter which is 30 mm. So 30 to the fourth divided by 64. And then since we are using a bracket, we'll use plus right here since the negative sign will be distributed to the 2. And so plus a d squared. For the circle, the area is stored into C, so C multiplied by D squared, in which our D is 160, our Y3, minus Y bar, which is stored into E, and then we'll square this one. And so solving all of these, we can now compute IXN. And so if we'll input all of these, we can now solve IXN. And so using our calculators, we have 150 times 200 cubed. Uh, by the way, this is for the hollow circular section. So this is over 36, and then plus A multiplied by 400 over 3, minus E, and then squared. Plus this value, which is 0.11 times 75 to the 4th, plus B times 200, plus 4 times 75 over 3 pi, minus E, and then squared, minus pi times 30 to the 4th over 64, plus C. Uh, notice that this value cannot be included in our calculation because the number of characters is actually a lot. And so what you can do here is you can remove this one and then press equals and then you can write down this value or store it into another variable. And so what I'm gonna do is I will just store this into f. So shift store and then f. f now defines this value and so these are stored into f. So f minus this one will be our ixn. So minus 
Don't forget the parentheses, so pi times 30 to the 4th over 64 plus c times 160 minus e. We will now square this one. So squared, we have 906491471408. So ixn equals this value. This is now our answer. Now, if you are using Canon calculator, what you can do to streamline the process is you can actually store y1, y2, and y3 into the numbers. And so just to demonstrate that one, we can store this one, uh, 400 over 3, into number 1. So shift, store, and then 1. And then 200 plus 4 times 75 over 3 pi. We can store this into the number 2. So shift, store, 2. We now have this. And then for the last one, we have 160. We can store this into 3. So shift, store, and then 3. We now have the following values. So this is stored into 1 this is 2 and this is 3 and then you can also store these values for io into other variables so let's say you want to store this one into 4 this one into 5 and this one into 6 so doing that we have 150 times 200 cubed divided by 36 let's put this into number 4 and then we have 0.11 times 75 to the fourth this is 5 and then here we have pi times 30 to the fourth divided by 64 this is number 6 and then for a we have 15,000 for b we have 5625 divided by 2 times pi and then for c we have 2 to 5 pi and so we can now type the following values now again our e was 170.1465901 so 170.1465901 this is our e and so we can now type this one so again this is 4 so 4 uh, recall 4 and then plus a times this is stored into 1 so 1 minus e and then squared plus 5 plus b multiplied by uh, this value is stored into 2 so recall 2 minus e and then squared uh, by the way always make sure that the number has an underline it means that you're using the stored variable and then finally for the last shape we have minus don't forget the parentheses so this is 6 plus c multiplied by this is stored into 3 so recall 3 minus e and then squared press equals you will get the same value earlier however we were able to type everything in one go because we were able to store all of these values into the letters and the numbers so this is the advantage of the canon calculator now as your assignment try to solve the moment of inertia about the centroidal y-axis and then just use this formula for the semicircle and so for comparison you have this one